too, Luke. The printer is still busted. What the fuck, man? How's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode 45, 46 of the Topless Robot Counting's Podcast. Hard. My name is Ryan. I am Brooks. I'm Tyler. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, joining us this week is John. Uh, Guys, thanks for having me. That's otherwise funny. known as uh, Gamester81 Gamester on uh, YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. Um, can you bring the mic a little bit closer to your... Sorry. Yes, I can bring my head closer to the mic or the mic closer to my head, either way. Um... So thank you for joining us, John. Yes, uh, as, good to be here. Uh, this week is uh, the uh, Game On Expo. The Game On Expo going which, on year five. Yeah, I was going to ask because uh, yeah. I remember. I think I attended year two the first time when it was in the Mesa, Mesa. Convention Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, hosted rock band uh, all weekend. I think. Uh, yeah, at least in so. the band room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a lot of fun. That, that was year two? That was that year was two. That was that long ago? Yeah, right. Yeah, Time needs to stop moving. Yeah, that was it's a while ago. It's won't. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, before we get uh, too into it, okay. there are some news items to address uh, this week. Um, and I actually did the professional thing that we never do. What did we do? And I took notes. <gasps> through the week about things that we should bring up on the podcast oh my God. instead of us blindly reaching for topics uh, that we can kind of half remember. If we're, we're in the big times week. now, boys. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I don't like the structure. I feel I feel restricted. <laughs> my creative freedom is being impugned upon. You'll Please hear don't. from my agent about this, Ryan. <laughs> Unfortunately, in setting up for the podcast, I forgot to bring that list up. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right back on track, everyone. I feel better. You know, sometimes I take notes. I just don't bring them. <laughs> <laughs> I sit there and read a whole bunch of things and then just don't write anything down. And I'll then just like, I kind of remember be like, right. what happened this week before I left. <laughs> so uh, there were a few things that uh, were announced this week. Uh, that new game, uh, Outer Worlds, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 is coming out on Nintendo Switch, yeah. uh, which I did not expect. Uh, I figured that it was going to be more of a, you know, uh, AAA, you know, kind of console title. It's from the team that uh, did uh, Fallout 3 New Vegas. And uh, they're actually going to be bringing it out on the Switch, which I'm I'm surprised by the amount of games uh, and uh, scope of games that have been coming out on the Switch. Yeah, I wonder how it ran on the Switch. You know. Yeah, I mean, well, with if they're doing anything like what it has been doing with the Wolfenstein and and Doom and stuff like that, those run startlingly well on mm -hmm. the Switch. Mm -hmm. Granted, with some graphical, you know. Uh, uh, Problem, you know, yeah. not problems, but graphical downgrades. But Mortal Kombat, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 11 does not look great on the Switch. No, it really looks like look a game. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played I, on the Switch. Is it bad on the Switch? I haven't played it. Some, some of the downgrades they had to do are very like blatantly noticeable. Oh, and right. I think like, specifically hair looks terrible. Yeah. yeah. Part of their problem, though, is that they are still using FMV transitions for story. So that makes the graphical downgrade all the more jarring because yeah. everything looks great in uh, the FMV and then you go to the game render and it looks like hot garbage. <laughs> Everything looks great until you start doing the thing the game exists for. Yeah, <laughs> the exactly. Gameplay. That's what gameplay. Exactly. It's like, it's like the Warcraft three like cinematic scenes. They look beautiful, and then zug zug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Is that an orc or a potato? <laughs> yeah, it's anyone's guess. <laughs> so when is this coming out? Uh, I they don't think there's a release yet? date uh, okay. announced yet, but uh, they I, I think it is a delayed release on Nintendo Switch. So they're, uh, they, I think they have announced a release date for the main uh, consoles and then just said it sometime after uh, it's going to arrive on Nintendo Switch. Cool. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, other things uh, that, that came out... Uh, Oh, uh, the messenger got some new DLC. I haven't checked out yet. But yep, it's, uh, it's the free. surfing DLC or whatever. Yeah, it's it some is. like this... picnic. I, I think it's just going to be some wacky stuff going on. As far as like, uh, uh, 
they're going to take the picnic thing to a literal level, I'm sure. Because yeah. I, I think the, the name of the DLC is like Picnic Panic or something like that. Oh, sure, yeah. sure. But in so, order to access it, you have to get to a certain point in the game, right? You can't I, just... I I don't know. I haven't. Uh, I, sure I downloaded to... it, but I haven't fired it up. Yeah, I was gonna to fire out. it up, but I need to buy a new uh, extension cable for my controller, uh, my PC controller. I bought like a ten foot extension so I could yeah. play it at work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I read about reading about it that you have to actually get, play a certain point in the game before you actually can access the yeah. DLT. That would make works. sense. Yeah. Well, I have so. destroyed that game a couple of times now. They it's, don't want I got you stuck to... at the very end. I couldn't figure out the the notes. I'm like two more notes, and I'm uh. stuck. You have to pay that guy to give you any hints, and I can't figure out the hint. So like, <laughs> it's a fun game. I have not played nearly as much as yeah, uh, I would like to. It's the greatest ninja game, retro, <clears throat> new retro ninja game thus far, except there's that other one coming out. Yeah, yeah. there's um, another one coming out. What's it called? It's by the... Shadow, it's not Shadow. It's the one that Cyber looks ninja. Super Cyber Shinobi. Cyber Shadow. It looks Cyber Shadow. like a lot like Shinobi. Yeah. yeah. It's um, uh, uh, Yacht Club Games. Is, uh, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, well, and let's not forget Devolver's. Uh, oh yeah, Katana Zero. Uh, Katana Zero, yeah. which is uh, another really it. fun one. I I will be getting that because I am getting a Switch next month. It it's is so good. Oh so good. Which, what game is that? Which Katana one? Zero. Okay, check it out. It is seriously good. It looks very I mean, Mega Man Zero. In general, you can expect anything yeah. out of Devolver. You know, anything that Devolver publishes is going to be this neat little interesting yeah. pocket of you know interesting gameplay like new ideas or something weird or i i can't even explain it you can expect good and bizarre out awesome. of out of them and uh this what, when are we just models. gonna make out with devolver digital already <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel like almost every podcast like devolver hey guys <laughs> we yeah. love you i've already it's scheduled cut. my devolver face tag my <laughs> 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 devolver, devolver wife with pillow is yeah, they do come up right now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and um, it, the, I think the most recent one that they came out with was uh, My Friend Pedro, which I still need to play, but it looks like which a ton one is of fun. It's the one that's like you're... Uh, a, What's it called? This is my favorite part when someone has to describe a Devolver Digital game without any of the person having any context. <laughs> so you're <laughs> a, an insane hitman who is guided by a talking banana in a, a physics-rich uh, shoot 'em up Oh. This sounds fantastic. It's My a, friend part of Pedro. a balanced breakfast. So it's a shoot 'em up game. Yeah. Okay. You have a uh, two different pistols. It's very uh, room or room based. A lot of flipping and shooting at people from oh, different yeah. angles. Oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. And yeah. a lot of okay. uh, uh, it's the running gun. Kind of, yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's got like a running gun sort of shoot 'em up like crossover use vibe of bullet time. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of like a slow floaty jumping that, that you like awesome. to line up I'll really fun trick shots with. So yeah. it looks so like Hotline Miami, but I just got hit in the head with a hammer. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, other news that came uh, that uh, came out this week: uh, Turok Two is uh, coming out on Switch on the first day of Game On. Turok the Dinosaur. So they are. It's <laughs> weird. They like just kind of were like. Here, here, have a, a Turok remaster Fine. a couple of months ago <laughs> yeah. or something. You're not going to buy it doing anyways, doing a, door. A physical for that. Sorry. Oh, you yeah, I thought Limited Run was doing a physical for that. Too. Oh, really? Yeah, Ooh. I wonder if they're going to have copies at Game On. They'll have a booth at Game On. So. Oh, no shit. Mm -hmm. Huh. My first well, exposure to Turok the Dinosaur Hunter was the comic book I found at a laundromat. <laughs> when I was a kid, <laughs> I was like, oh, I think I saw, isn't this a game? That, I, saw, I think it was but, crazy. Yeah. And then the game is crazy. And game I hasn't aged well. So. No, it hasn't. Yeah, no, not great. Yeah. Trolls are like, uh. Yeah, I um, uh, was never, like, I never had an N64. Or yeah. I did, but late in the game. So I never really got to play much Turok back when it came out. And it dropped on the eShop. I'm like, oh, cool. I haven't thought about this in literally forever. Right. So I grabbed it. And yeah, it, it hasn't aged well. It's fun to run around and remember things. Yeah. But uh, it definitely hasn't aged well. But Turok 2 is coming out on this Friday uh, yeah. on, on the Nintendo Switch. I Who mean, owns IP for that now? I have no idea. It used to be Acclaim. And, I don't know. Like it was, oh, I don't even um, know. Isn't it? Acclaim's not yeah. around anymore. No. So Acclaim got folded into THQ. Did they? Which Maybe. is no longer around. Well, yeah. Uh, no. So <laughs> now it's the trademark. Who, who? The trademark for Acclaim, Collector Vision, we own the trademark for Acclaim. Oh, know? really? No. Yeah. yeah so we're. We, we do a lot of it. We'll talk more about it in the podcast here later, but yeah, our company, we do a lot of uh, old school games for classic consoles. So like legally we can use 
the claim logo on these games. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, we don't have the old IPs for a claim, obviously. Sure. But um, we're working, we're coming out with a game for the Switch in a couple weeks, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it more here in a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I was showing uh, uh, these guys some uh, gameplay earlier. Yeah. 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 It looked really cool. That Thank sounds you. like a pretty cool acclaim to fame. There you go. <laughs> 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 Thanks. Nice. How to get one out, guys? How to get one out? Nice. Yeah. Um, Nintendo Switch Lite pre-orders are live. Uh, so if you want to spend two hundred dollars on a uh, portable only Nintendo Switch, oh, that might uh, have the calories. That might have the same issue that we're having with the with, with the, the Joy-Con, Joy-Con drift. drift. Right. Except now you can't. Except won't now you be can't able to send it. a Joy-Con back. <laughs> right. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea, guys. <laughs> Um, Hopefully that's fixed. The Pokemon one looks kind of cool. Though. Yeah, yeah, that's actually the one that I want to pre-order yeah. uh, just to have it because handheld collector. <laughs> the screen is bigger? Uh, no, no I think it's a little bit smaller. smaller? Yeah, It's not much smaller though, right? It's like, not a lot sure it's smaller. Just... I think it's six inches, something like that. Something like that. Um, a good size. The, uh, uh, But yeah, I, I'll probably end up pre-ordering a, a Pokemon one just because they look really neat. I'm curious if it's going to replace the 3DS as far as a handheld market. They Nintendo keep saying swears, they're not. Yeah, yeah, Nintendo swears up and down that this yeah. is not mark the death of the 3DS. They're still going to keep yeah. supporting the 3DS, which it still baffling. makes buku bucks. The DS yeah. is not like I mean, it's slowed down, but like yeah. it still shows up on like best seller stuff and really? everything. Yeah, yeah, because and... they're not releasing shit for it. No, they're not. Unfortunately, I, I think I, the I, last... I buy I buy one a few months ago to finally get on the bandwagon. And it's <laughs> like, cool. What games do I get? Right. I think the last uh, major title that I bought for the 3ds was uh, WarioWare Smooth Moves. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because that came out last year. Like but gold? I can't think of anything or gold. Yeah. That's what, yeah. So yeah, yeah Smooth yeah. Moves was on the Wii. I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oops. <laughs> gotta upgrade. I've got to upgrade your library there, Grandpa. I got this nice new <laughs> WarioWare game. You guys want to go to my house and play Pikmin later? <laughs> <laughs> and here it's all the rage. <laughs> Nintendo's strategy is interesting because, like, usually most companies like Sony, Microsoft, when they release a follow up system, it's better than the first, right? Where Nintendo, yeah. like, they did it with the, the 2DS, right? They kind of dumbed down the system, yep. sell for cheaper for the mass audiences, right? And I think they're doing the same thing with the yeah. Switch Lite, right? So. And um, they're uh, doing a hardware refresh on the main Switch console that yeah. uh, releases mid-month this okay. month. Okay. So I I can't remember the exact date, but after a certain point uh, this month, uh, if you buy a brand new Nintendo Switch, it's going to have probably uh, double the battery life. Oh, that's, nice. that's the main selling point of it. Oh, so. cool. I'm glad I waited then. I love the Switch. Yeah, I, I, I like absolutely love my Switch. Switch. I know... Uh, the 2DS, I get it. People always talked about how it looked and how dumb it was. <laughs> yeah. But nothing has made me angrier faster as far as console hardware goes than holding one of those for the first time and just going, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, a, it's, it's like a big, like kind of rounded, like plastic rectangle. Right. I hit, it's immediately, it I was just cheap. like, why would you want to hold this? It feels terrible. Yeah, you should, you should at least fold it like the original. But door, then ultimately they did. That one right there is a 2D 3DS. Oh, that, that right there. The okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, so like, but when I eventually first saw they this... did go to a normal clamshell for their yeah. 2D 3DS models. It was but... it was like a really high end Tiger Electronics handheld. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Ooh, I have two two Castlevania games. Cool. Man, I used to have Battletoads on a Tiger Electronics. Oh, yeah. It was terrible. They had awesome I, I had licenses X-Men though for Tiger. How do they get all the licenses? I have, Combat, well, Street I mean, Fighter 2 and... if you think about it at the time, Sonic like. Hedgehog. There was nothing uh, uh, like the only Sonic competitors were Nintendo and yeah. Genesis, and they were like, you know, way up here as far as right. you know price point was concerned. Yeah, so, they were just bottom feeders. Nobody really cared. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can have the pennies that, yeah. <laughs> that you make on yeah. this. Right, if you go Tiger, I don't yeah. care what you do. <laughs> have <laughs> have two, uh, two for two dollars or something. <laughs> oh, God. Um, and, uh, there has been news of, uh, GameStop playoffs, potential GameStop playoffs uh, coming up. Third of them got Have they fully happened? This past Thursday, a third of the district managers got fired. Yeah. <laughs> I, Soon. <laughs> all I had seen was that there was a leaked internal memo of their yeah. plan to stay relevant and, or rather stay, not stay relevant, but stay, uh, profitable. So stay relevant, they're both. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. They're, uh, changing their uh, district structure. So yeah. they're merging a whole bunch of 
you know, districts into larger ones. So they laid off at least 50 people that were in HR yeah. and district management and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've heard about this new uh, GameStop premiere that they're still going to roll out. Mm-mm. Like, I, I think that's what they're calling it, but it's for these specific stores that hit certain sales goals. Like, they're going to change the, the design logo up front and the shirts are going to change. And really? It's incentive for the employees to, like, sell. Yeah. So, you know, it's like GameStop, they've gone more into pop shop yeah shop, right? i mean and it's, it's like part of why pretty much bought think geek a few years ago <laughs> right, was right. to get the in on the collectibles and they're starting to do tournaments like we were just at one uh, yesterday they were doing a smash brothers tournament part oh, of the right. game on so they're trying to turn it into more and they're going to create like uh local uh teams esports teams in in the really? area so oh they're trying to be more community centric they're trying to be more community centric like the so. old mom and pop stores they drove out <clears throat> and, and, <laughs> speaking of which Speaking of which, you're going to have like a retro stores now too, selling retro games only. Ah, really? really? Yeah. I'm not sure what they're going to call it, but it's going to be GameStop. I don't know if it's GameStop retro or whatever, but it's going to be like Mom and Pop so, Shop. You know, <laughs> Fallout <laughs> games and all local shops. It's going to, unfortunately, be it's going to. Yeah. I like that idea. I, I kind of. I mean, I haven't gone into a GameStop in so long other than just to look at the cool toys. Yeah, that's, I mean, <laughs> pretty much. About it, like, the digital distribution direction has absolutely decimated their yeah. appeal. Like, and you go there to buy hardware, maybe. I go, well, I go to GameStop, like, if I'm looking for a specific older game. So, like, right. I got that 3DS, and I'm just like, okay, what are some 3D, 3D uh, or what are some DS titles that I was super into? Sure, because you'll be able to find yeah, used like, copies and stuff like, like, like that. Like, I, I managed to track down, um, uh, like, Rhythm Heaven. Uh, sure. And just like stuff that I didn't want to wait to get shipped to my house. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I go to GameStop if I want to find uh, 20 copies of Madden 2005. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, exactly bucks. 20. Yeah. It's so cheap. Cents. You're losing money yeah. if you don't buy it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, for our generation, I think obviously we're more, we grew up in the retro or the, the hard, you know, the physical copy, right? Mm. We always want physical. Yep. But for the millennials, they want, they don't care. They just want digital, whatever. So it's really yeah. hurting. GameStop, I mean, and it helps which it. is great for companies that are delivering digitally because uh, I remember that uh, there was uh, a movement <clears throat> by the game company or, you know, some developers or game companies uh, to, to try and get a cut of resales. Uh, because they see that as as a missed opportunity for you know when when people trade in it's like well you're reselling a thing that we've effectively licensed to you so we should be getting a mm-hmm. cut of the resales on on these as well then essentially they're profiting off of a thing for fucking ever right. um, but with the digital distribution there's no way to trade it in or resell it they got your money and they're not having to spend the resources on producing physical goods uh, or anything like that they're charging the same amount and in some cases more uh, like the you know controversy with uh, the ports that have gone to the nintendo switch and and things like that Uh, so so, yeah it's Mm -hmm. i don't know whether any of this is good or bad (laughs) yeah it's changing and it also helps too that the price of like memory has gone down significantly oh, yeah. like true. for a PC. Yeah. Like I got, I bought a solid state drive, a whole t- terabyte, terabyte solid state yeah. drive for a uh, hundred bucks Yeah, on, a- on Amazon. I have a my door the, the day I bought it. <laughs> yeah. I have a 512 gig micro SD in my Nintendo switch right now that I spent a hundred bucks on. It's right. insane. Yeah. yeah. GameStop will be the next blockbuster eventually. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah. Because the same thing happened in movies, right? People will be getting nostalgic about GameStop, and that, that's when we know that it's really gone. <laughs> unless like, oh, unless they successfully pivot the way that they've been trying to yeah. into collectibles, and that becomes a sustaining you know model for them. Um, or if, like you said, you know, if they're shifting to a retro focus and, and start that's opening these retro to, stores, trying to do more community eventually that's going to be the thing that keeps them open. If anything is, yeah. is going to be reselling old retro stuff because new stuff just isn't going to be physical. Back when it was Funko land and, and, you know, uh, EB games. I mean, that's where Funko they, land and EB Babbage's and software, Babbage, et cetera, et cetera, all that. They had uh, retro games and, yeah. you know, so. But, they uh, were all, Game and crazy. they all became Tingly. GameStop. They all yeah. became GameStop. So it will be interesting to see what the future, I mean, we a lot of people talk shit about GameStop, but at the end of the day, I think if they were to go under, I think a lot of people would be like, what the fuck happened to GameStop? You know, people would be kind of like, it's a part of gaming. You know? yeah. yeah, and so. I mean, like, especially like if you're out in the suburbs and stuff like that, and they're had there there weren't like a mom and pop place, right. you know, to go to, your options, if there's no GameStop, is Walmart. Uh, or Target if you're lucky, mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. And they don't they don't ever have anything that I that I'm like super about sure. beyond the mainstream stuff. Yeah. You know? So it's yeah. like 
then you have to buy it online, and at that point you're buying it digitally. Though Target has been upping their game in general. Uh, Target also is after that collector market. Ah, uh, yeah. And their toys uh, have been. So they've got, for example, those uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, NECA figures uh, from you know the original animation that mm, I love so much are, are cool. Target exclusives. Yeah, yeah. the sweet. two packs. Um, mm. And the they do tons of video game branded toys and and figures and and things like that. Those so. awful Marvel versus Capcom Infinite action figures <laughs> with, with Mega Man X's face just being all like, Ooh. Oh, really? <laughs> it hurt because I remember back in the Those day Hasbro, uh, I don't think they were Hasbro no, they, maybe they, were. they might be Hasbro they were. but I remember I back in the day when the first in the first Marvel versus Capcom came out they, they, uh, they, had, action, they had action figure packs and at the time I was looking for like any kind of Iron Man action figure that didn't look stupid uh, and I had to settle for War Machine, which was fine. But the War Machine came with the Mega Man figure, and I threw the Mega Man figure away because I didn't know who Mega Man was at the time. Oh, that's funny. And then I became obsessed. It became my white whale. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of white whales, uh, it is the 200th anniversary of Moby Dick this week. It, so, is it? Yes. Is that why you have a copy of Moby Dick? Like yes, it is. <laughs> this is this is all encapsulating of what Brooks is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're getting the full the Brooks Black Dahlia murder and yeah. Moby Dick. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> the movie was just on TV like last week. I watched the original movie. I uh, I I love that movie, um, yeah. and I like the Patrick Stewart TV movie that they did in the '90s. Uh, because hearing Patrick Stewart just scream about, you know, trying to kill a whale is just the best thing. <laughs> like, if I ever met him, as much as a Star Trek guy as I am, the first thing I'd be like, he's like, you know, you made me want to deliver the speech, that speech from the movie in my speech class in high school. From across the room. Is that Patrick Stewart, the star of Moby Dick? <laughs> <laughs> Not, Captain Ahab. <laughs> not to go too off topic, but you hear that Picard's coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't. The have trailer faith in it. looks great. It looks cool. It yeah. looks really good. Yeah, yeah but, but Alex, what's his face is involved in it, and he discovery and oh, oh not going down. Is that it the Discovery Showrunners doing it? Um, he's. I know he's producing it. I'm pretty sure he might have a hand in writing it. And then, which that if that's the case, and I don't want to have anything. To what's his Berman or what's his name? Um, um Kurt. Yeah. Not Kurtzman. It's something like that, Berman or Kirkman or something. Yeah, something like that. I shan't. Sp I shall not speak his true name. I mean, <laughs> speaking a person's true name summons them. Discovery's not too bad, but it is not typical Star Trek for sure. All uh, you know, uh, if we really need our next generation fix, we just watch the Orville. Yes. Yeah, I do like Orville. Correct. Or we can just continue to watch the next generation over and over again until we know all the technical readouts of every ship. The Orville's really good. I like Orville a lot. So, uh, news out of the way, uh, Game On is coming up this weekend, yeah. it's in its fifth year, um, and it, this is the third year at the Phoenix Convention Center? Third year at the Phoenix Convention Center, first two years were in Mesa, Yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, so, uh, how has it, obviously it must be growing then uh, over the years. It is, uh, it's grown well. like 50, 60% every year, which is awesome. So that's wow. Very, cool. very appreciative of that, yeah. Sure. Um, so, tell me a little bit about what Game uh, got you like why why? <laughs> why why well uh for years my my friend jason and i were you know started with a youtube channel right like mm -hmm. much before game 31 and i've been fortunate to be invited to some shows across country went to mm. portland retro gaming expo and pax and you know there's a magfest which is a great show out east uh but there really was no show here local phoenix right so uh this is like maybe seven eight maybe nine years ago we were like we should start a show in, in phoenix and it just it took us like two or three years just playing just to get the first one off the ground. Yeah, I imagine. You know, just trying to find location, and we had zero experience how to run a show, and, and just finding the behind the scenes things you have to know, and you never even realize it, you know. So yeah, uh, but yeah, that's kind of how it got started. I imagine uh, the logistics of uh, putting a show like that together can be fairly nightmarish. It is, but fortunately, it it takes a village, right, to run something like this, and you know, have like yourself helping out with the music department. Kudos to you. <laughs> I was gonna say you've uh, got a great team. Yeah, we've got, we've got a fantastic <laughs> team, and uh, it wouldn't happen without the support. So certainly, it's it's not just my show, but I look at it as like a community show, and that you know, uh, when people have fun, it's the most important thing. So, so uh, who uh, are the uh, some of the guests that uh, we've got? Uh, yeah, year? so we've got uh, the voice of Mario, uh, Charles Martinet. Uh, yeah. He's coming out. It's a me, Mario. Yeah. 
And we got the voice of Bowser, which is funny. Uh, Kenny James, he's, he, all he does is grunts and roars. But, you mean uh, it wasn't Doug Bowser this whole time? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't in the whole time. Uh, and we got the, uh, Jen Taylor. Um, she's the voice of Princess Peach, but she also does Cortana from Halo and mm-hmm. some other. Oh, red. Um, she does uh, some uh, some other like anime characters and stuff like that. Oh, what cool. a dichotomy, by the way. My, my big roles are Princess Peach and Cortana. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, you know, we're kind of bowling that as a Mario kind of package. We're going to, you know, um, and then we're doing a big Pokemon kind of reunion for the original Pokemon cast. So, from oh, the that's original awesome. show. Oh, nice. So, we've got Ver- another Taylor, Veronica Taylor, who's the voice of Ash. She's coming out. We got uh, Eric, uh, who's Brock and James. And, and we've got like five voice actors from the original Pokemon show. It's that's the first awesome. time they've actually come back together since the show departed back in. Really? really? Yeah. Oh, wow. For Holy the first crap. time ever. First time ever. Wow. Yeah. There's been four of them together, but not five of them together. It's a full cast, so it's pretty unique. That's awesome. powers combined. <laughs> yeah. So if you're a Pokemon fan, and Pokemon kind of caters obviously towards gaming, but does anime and also does tabletop, which is you know a big part of our show too. So it's kind of like it kind of covers all the bases for our show. Sure. Uh, we were going to get the the musician who does the original Pokemon theme song. Oh uh, man! But. Uh, the, the stars didn't line. He really wanted to come out for it too. I would have made time in <laughs> oh, the yeah. music schedule, just Pokemon. like while while bands are setting up, like between bands or yeah. something, or or just <laughs> bef- but, in order to open before I do the the rock band on on Sunday, yeah. just open with him doing <laughs> yeah. the. Uh, so, Pokemon just want to see song. a bunch of thir- you know people near approaching thirty just bawling their eyes out. Fangirl, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it just didn't fit our budget this year. But it would have been wh- really cool to yeah. have him out. But he 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 had his expressions just coming out. That's cool. Um, we've got uh, Bayonetta, voice of Bayonetta. Oh, She'll be there. Yeah, and this uh, is the first show she's ever done. Right? She's, no, she's from England. She's never done a show before. Um, and so her last name is Taylor. So we got three Taylors: <laughs> Jen Taylor, Veronica Taylor, and her name's Helena Taylor, which is odd. But um, but they're all three a Taylor, right? Yeah. Uh, but she's coming out first time she's ever done a show, uh, which would be cool. Yeah, uh, we got the voice of uh, his name's Tim Kitzerman. I don't remember his last name. It's, uh, but anyway, he does a voice of NBA Jam. He's the announcer from NBA Jam. Oh wow! Uh, NFL Blitz. So what we're doing is we're doing like an NBA Jam and NFL Blitz tournament. And in the finals, he's going to announce it live on the big screen. Ah, that's so awesome. He's going to be like, he's on fire! Boom, shaka laka. Here comes. You know, that's so fucking great. Yeah, that's, so he'll, he'll be that's there. That's awesome. It's uh, better than what I was thinking. I was like, you should disguise him as a, as an as an as an arcade cabinet. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just put him inside. Give him first a out. <laughs> <laughs> you wish me to live. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, the commentary starts getting deeply personal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you wearing that shirt with those pants? <laughs> you look like your wife hasn't loved you in ten years. <laughs> Do you even know how to play this game? <laughs> your pants are unzipped. Were you raised in a barn? <laughs> Where are your parents? <laughs> I think it'd be fun for the Pokemon cast to do like the Star Wars script in Pokemon voices. Oh god! Or some, yep. some script, yep. famous script that would be funny to hear him in. Like, that would be great. Pokemon voices, but oh no! Yeah. Um, so he's coming out. That's cool. Da- uh, Daniel Pacina, he has been out several years. Uh, he's the original like Johnny Cage, uh, Scorpion, oh, yeah. Sub Zero. Um, we've got uh, Paul Niemeyer. He's he's a classic like arcade artist. So he did cabinets like uh, Tron. Uh, oh, hell is right. Uh, Satan's Hi- uh, was it Satan's Hollow? Uh, um, he did the original. He designed the original Mortal Kombat uh, design with the dragon. And he, I was talking on the phone. He's like, he's full of knowledge. So his panel's gonna be really fascinating because he. I found out shit that I didn't know about Mortal Kombat that in, it, a lot of people don't know about. And you don't realize, it, but the original Mortal Kombat dragon faced left. Really? If you look at the cabinet, he's facing left. The dragon's facing left. But then Mortal Kombat Two came out. They've switched it. He's facing right and it's been to the right ever since. Huh. And it's something you just never catch. Like, I, would, oh, I never would have thought yeah. about that until just now. Yeah. And uh, he, next he, thing you're going to you know, you're gonna tell me is that combat spelled wrong. He's got, <laughs> yeah. he, he got well, it's, it's, he's got this original document he's going to bring copies of to, 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 for people to, to get signed. But the original title was called Dragon Attack. Really? And, and it was all etched out in the same font as Mortal Kombat. Oh, and then, wow. like, um, one of the guys who. Uh, don't know his name, but a guy that started Mortal Kombat said, no, let's call it Mortal Kombat, probably a better name. So he has like a handwritten note saying like, let's call it Mortal Kombat instead of Dragon Attack, but it could have been called Dragon Attack. Could you imagine today with Dragon Attack 11 coming yeah, out? Right. Oh, dude, Dragon Attack 11 Dragon is Attack. my favorite fight <laughs> of all time. Like little shit like that. Ultra like, wow, that's Shaggy's pretty... in it. <laughs> yeah. So or, we'll... Yeah, the movie Dragon Attack Annihilation. Yeah. <laughs> so he'll be out there. And a whole bunch of YouTubers or friends of mine, like, I don't know if you guys know Boogie. 
Oh uh, yeah, I yeah. saw Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight. Two Nine Eight Eight. He's coming uh, out. He's coming. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. he's coming out. Uh, we've got. Uh, Let him know. He he is more than welcome to crash our our uh, panel, uh, panel okay. yeah, on Friday. Yeah, night. I'll let him know. Oh, that'd be awesome. Be awesome. <laughs> I don't know if you guys follow like Metal Jesus at his career at all. Or I'm familiar with Metal Jesus. Yeah. His whole crew is coming out, which is cool. Um, yeah, man. So yeah, it's the gonna apostles. Be, we got a bunch of cosplay guests as well, and it's gonna be a good time. I'm really yeah, for it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I, last year, I remember uh, on the topic of uh, like arcade art and, and yeah. shit like that. Um, I didn't even realize. Like, I'm walking through Artist Alley, and there's this guy, and he's got like you know the Rampage marquee and and oh, stuff Brian like Collins, that. Yeah. And I'm just kind of looking through it. I'm like, man, this I I love this old artwork. It looks so fucking good. And he, uh, I didn't even realize that's the dude who made all who of that. Who made it, yeah. Rampage, Sitting yeah. right there. Yeah. Wow. And it was, it was super nice, but I'm just like, oh, it's Artist Alley. This is just someone who made a recreation. Nope, it's it's the guy. Yeah, he's called Brian Collins. Yeah, he's a super cool dude. Yeah, yeah. he was really nice. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, that's rad. I am, I am very excited. Awesome. Uh, um. Obviously, you uh, started as a YouTuber then. Yeah, back in 2008. Right on. Back in the day. Uh, yeah. And that is kind of what paved the road to... That definitely opened doors for me. Right? Yeah, I mean, started doing reviews on just classic consoles that a lot of people never heard of, you know, or don't own, you know, like Nintendo 64 disk drive or the Bandai Apple Pippin and things like that. And just kind of, you know, just people seem to enjoy it and it's grown. What got you started as a collector? Like, have you just kind of always... I've always been kind of a collector since the beginning, you know, and I... In college, I had a whole bunch of consoles, and of course, watch like uh, Happy Console Gamer or uh, yeah, uh, James Rolfe or oh, you know, yeah. Anger, oh, yeah, Nerd, Happy Console Gamer, all those guys. And uh, I want to get James to game on, by the way. I'd love to. That would be rad. That would be really cool. Really cool. Yeah. Um, the most wholesome man to make that many poop jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I've been told from his crew that he doesn't do West Coast shows, which is odd because he's doing Portland and California and but whatever. Hmm. But uh, we'll get him out to game on it. We'll, that would be we'll, awesome. He just doesn't do seriously. desert shows. Yeah, it's maybe too, hot maybe it's too hot here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, we'll get him out to, to game on. Um, but yeah, you know, he obviously was a huge inspiration for, for the show. And I wanted to find more information about the, the items I had in my collection. And there wasn't. So I kind of was the one. I got a camera when I got married and. I kind of my old videos. I'm just no editing at all. I'm just like filming it and just talking over the camera, and and seem, people seem to enjoy it. And I just kind of evolved the channel over the years. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so is that what you do primarily uh, nowadays? Then or no? I have a full time job on top of all this. Really? Yeah. God yeah. damn. <laughs> yeah. It is yeah. difficult to juggle the YouTube uh, it is. stuff. It and is. Yeah, YouTube's kind of taking a back seat a little bit for me, just personally, because I've got I'm more focused on on game on Expo and. Uh, what we're doing at Collector Vision Games, but I still do YouTube channels for sure, videos, yeah. Right on. Yeah. Uh, so how? tell me a little bit about uh, Sydney Hunter. Uh, yeah. This yeah. is a game that uh, you have coming out. Super excited soon, about right? it. Yeah, and I'll send you guys review copies too. You guys can check it out. That'd be awesome. I'd love, Hell love yeah. to yeah. check it out, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's called Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mine. Uh, it started off like five years ago. It's been in the works for five years. Uh, as, I don't know if you've played the game like Montezuma's Revenge, if you've played like a classic game like that. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you've played the game, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, but it's evolved into its own game. And it's funny because uh, we originally called it Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mayans and we realized, oh shit, Mayans is not really a word technically. And then we call it Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mayan, only come to find out that Mayan is not a real, real word either. It's actually a language, not a group. Mm -hmm. huh. Yep. So it's, uh, it should be Curse of the Maya. Yep. Right? Ah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you just call them uh, the Maya. Sense. Yeah, so uh, by that time, we're like, Maya. oh shit, we've been marketing this game the wrong title the whole time. <laughs> so what we do is we like make a little joke and make fun of ourselves in the game with some some commentary and like, <laughs> oh, you know. So anyway, um, so we kind of own to the mistake, but at this point, we've already marketed it as Curse of the Mayans. So we're like, okay. I think most yeah. people don't realize anyway. They're like, no, sure. Maya, Maya, no, like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the first I've heard, to be honest. Most yeah. people, could you believe, don't know a whole lot about a dead culture. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what? So uh, the, the premise is you're, it kind of starts off as a very simple game. It evolves. There's 13 levels. Uh, you start in uh, the Yucatan Peninsula and you get, you find a pyramid. You're, Sydney Hunter is kind of Sydney's like a, an explorer, kind of like Indiana Jones type character. And he gets trapped in this pyramid and all of a sudden he comes to find out that like there's this time of Wahab, which a lot of the story on this game actually based on actual Maya uh, like theology and like mythology and all that. Sure. So uh, the, the Wahab, you guys are familiar with the Mayan calendar? You guys yeah. Okay. Yeah. So their Mayan calendar is actually uh, 360 days in the calendar, the last five days are considered Wahab, which is a very unlucky, like they believe that during those five days of Wahab, the gods can come down and like 
kick your ass and like huh. shit can happen. And so they're very uh, like, uh, what is it? Uh, superstitious about this sure. time. So this is the time that City Hunter appears in this this pyramid. And then so what happens, long story short, is there's a Mayan calendar and it gets broken into uh, the, the god. His name's is He's a feathered serpent god. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've heard of him or not. Uh, he breaks it into different pieces. And your goal is to go out and like save the calendar, collect all these pieces and basically save time from freezing and ending huh. because uh, they've been cursed. And that's where the whole name comes into it. But it kind of evolves and it, there's funny parts and there's some emotional parts in the game. Uh, uh, there's two different endings on how you play it. Uh, so like you can play it like one way and then like get a really sad and like what the fuck kind of ending was that? Oh, the Dan ending. You know, sure. the bad Yeah. And then there's actually, <laughs> there's a happy ending, uh, which is really cool too. So um, it's it kind of gameplay wise, I would explain it as like, uh, it's our love letter to, to retro gaming. So it's Mega Man and Castlevania feel. Uh, so you have a whip, but you also have a boomerang. And you also have like a, a, a spear weapon. You okay. can get later on. There's there's twelve different relics you can get, but uh, I'd throw in like a lot of like Mario two influence, a lot of Zelda two, um, Ducktales, like a lot of the classic games that we love. Um, and so yeah, it's just you play it and you'll be like, oh, there's a lot of Easter eggs in the game you might notice if you're like a fan of those old games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like the box art, the the Master System. Uh, oh yeah, we did. Look. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I, I do have a love of Master System. Awesome, yeah. yeah. So, uh, it's it's uh, Sydney Hunter. Sydney is kind of our Mario character, right? So we, we do a ton of different games. So a lot of people confuse like the Sega Master System game to this game. They're totally different games. So there's actually like four Sydney Hunter games that we've produced. Oh wow! Yeah. So the first one is uh, uh, the Sacred Tribe, which is the one you're referring to, mm. and it's a very simple kind of. There's no weapons. You you collect diamonds, and they're in, again in kind of a mine. Maya uh, feel, even I mess up on the word too, uh, <laughs> still even now. Uh, but then um, the sequel would be Curse of the Mind, which is the game I'm talking about. And then the follow-up would be uh, Caverns of Death. Okay. So Caverns of Death has been ported to Super Nintendo. We're also working on Genesis slash Mega Drive and it's, uh, it's, Ooh, yeah. it's like a CD version <laughs> with uh, you know in, increased music and stuff like that, which would be cool. Uh, the Sacred Tribe has been ported to Sega Master System and Television, ColecoVision, uh, we did a Commodore 64 port, which is with the floppy wow. and the cart. Wow. Good um, Lord. We're working on an original Game Boy port of that game. And it's all nuts because every time, it's not just as simple as like, let's take this game and put it on yeah, different you're, consoles. You're you going to have to completely color palettes are all off from music. the ground up. Yeah, right? so you had to work from the ground up. Yeah. God so it's, damn. It takes time. So we have like, uh, so Sydney's really covered literally from like old school retro to like modern. Uh, the modern one is more done in an 8 bit. I would, a lot of Shovel Knight influences to that game too. Mm, You'll nice. see a lot of Shovel Knight influences, but the, the bo- boss battles are done in a Mega Man style boss battle. So right th- this is my immediate curiosity. Uh, do the gods just have like a, a looming sense of presence, or do you actually have to fight a god in this? You game? fight gods. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Chuck gonna cut me in half with his axe. <laughs> so <laughs> some of the gods, for example, uh, there is the Corn God, right? And uh, I forget his name, his his Maya name, but. He, his, his attack is all done again in like Mega Man style. He'll throw like corn cobs at you. You know, you got to avoid these corn cobs. And then they'll like, there'll be like a, a row of like corn stocks that will f- like fly at you. You got to avoid. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. There's a god of um, death that you have to fight. There's a god of. Is it, uh, which, which is it? Is it a posh? Uh, I'll punch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Nice. Dude, you know, you're my, you know, you're my, uh, yeah. Uh, there's job, um, a, a Muzin Cab, which is, do you know who Muzin Cab is? B. The B God, yep. yep, you got it. So, so yes, he, of course. Nice, nice. So he, <laughs> there's like honey that you can get stuck on, and like will kind of slow you down. But he'll like obviously summon bees, and they'll start attacking you. That's really cool. Um, there's a God of um, oh, what's the other God? There's God Jaguar God. Um, is that uh, uh, oh, oh. Shibalanke? Or I've seen that guy? Uh, Shibilon- uh, yes, I think it is Shibalanke with, with an X. Yeah. Yep. Yep, that's him. Uh, so, so again, there's there's five mind gods that you fight uh, like that style. Then there's the the sun god that you, he's like the main one of the main battle, and then there's uh, uh, Kokokin, and you fight Kokokin both in serpent form, and you also fight him in human form, because um, he's in yeah. So if you ever go down to like Mega Man Castlevania, Mexico, hell yeah, yeah. If you go down to the parents of Mexico, like during a certain time of the day, equinox, the shadows look like the snake going down the steps. It's really cool. Oh neat. Yeah. So they but this this god is like he's like their like Satan if you want to call it that right. They're he's like the main main god so he's the one you have to fight in the game so a lot of it's kind of loosely based on uh my like mythology which is cool um a lot of the artwork you see in the game 
is actually we saw art from statues and we actually pixelated it and put it in the game. Oh, hell yeah. Um, That's really cool. So you're like, oh, I've seen that at like Chipotle. I recognize that. Like, That's the decline of Western civilization in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. You recognize an ancient god because I saw it at Chipotle. Because some yeah. kid got his finger stuck in it in the wall at you, Chipotle. So if, if, super, I was eating guacamole. If, yeah, I was going to say, if you recognize it uh, from, you know, when in, you're ordering extra barbacoa. And it's, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Guys, I saw Kukulkan in my guacamole yeah. today. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> this ancient Maya s- sigil indicates that guac does indeed cost extra. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So yeah. super stoked uh, for the game. It's August 22nd is what we're shooting for nice. uh, release. So it's coming up literally like in three weeks or so. Hell yeah. Uh, what, so, uh, what systems is that going to uh, be? Switch, uh, Steam, uh, and then we're doing uh, Xbox One and PS4. Nice. So I'll awesome. kind of cover most of the bases. The X- PS4 one will be kind of later down the road. Uh, but uh, definitely Switch and PC first. Xbox One will be soon to follow. So the last two nights I've been working on kind of the dev side of things and working on the, the eShop layout and you know up, uploading the pictures and images and the descriptions and all that sure. stuff I've been working on the last couple of days, but super stoked. We don't have a backing of a major indie publisher behind us, so we're totally indie. We're self-funding this game. We're not like, we didn't do a Kickstarter for this game. Yeah, so, so. how has that been in working with, uh, you know, I mean, these days, even indies are still working with indie publishers in order mm. to get themselves on the shop and, and whatnot. Yeah. How well, has we, direct communication been with for like Nintendo and we got Sony? We blessed and, and very fortunate. It took uh, about a year for Nintendo to even get back to us before we even heard wow. an answer. Um, and that's not very uncommon. When you initially, because they got so, I mean, they get so much bombarded, and suppose, they're very, very strict with uh, who they accept to be on the eShop, right? They don't want to shovel, which to their credit, right? They, they, you know, so they still end up with a fair bit of shovelware. They in do, there. they do, they do. Yeah, but, but it's fancy shovelware. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, it's it's vetted shovelware. <laughs> I've only had my switch for a couple months, and browsing the eShop, there's been a few times I'm just like, really? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> are you sure this isn't Steam? So there's some that do come through cracks, <laughs> but for the most part, they they're pretty selective and they're very slow to get back to you. So once I got that email, I'm like, holy shit, we got, we're going to be on Nintendo, which has been a dream of mine as a kid. To have yeah. a game on a Nintendo platform. Which That's is cool, awesome. You know, so uh, long story short, uh, the next process is get the game obviously done. Then you submit it to what they call lot check, and that's where they go and uh, they check, check for bugs. And we've we've read on forums and just talking. To, we've been different shows promoting the game and talking to different uh, indie devs. They're like, oh, Nintendo always takes about a month and a half to get back to you, and they'll always find something wrong with your game. Hmm. We submit our game like two weeks ago for lot check. Two weeks ago, and they got back to us. Game looks great. Let's go to go. Nice. Which is wow. unbelievable. I'm like, whoa. Right. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. So yeah, we're like pretty, pretty stoked. Now we're like, so how do we get on the showcase? Like, you know, <laughs> like and they're always kind of really weird about it because they don't give us a straight answer. But I think they just kind of select random games. But who knows? We'll see. But yeah, we don't. We're, we're self funding this game, so a lot of it's very nerve wracking. We're hoping that. The game itself will speak for itself. People will play it and love it and share it and do stream it. And the footage that I've seen has been great. And yeah. uh, I'll tell you what, I mean, we'll do a, a full run uh, gameplay on that awesome. happily. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm-hmm. And everything I've heard about this is directly into my interests. Yeah, you know? same. Yeah, yeah. All, right you had me at Mega Man in Castlevania. <laughs> like those are two of my favorite. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and some of the Easter eggs, you guys will be like, what? You know, you'll recognize some of the Easter eggs from like, oh, that's yes. really cool. But it's not like there's subtle Easter eggs that are like they kind of fit the story. They're not like, just like blatant. Like let's just throw this in there to throw it in there. It kind of oh, fits. I I love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was geeking out over an episode of OK o- OK KO this week because yeah. there was like the smallest Chrono Trigger thing just thrown in there. Yeah. It's like, so, oh, I'm going to watch it 10 times. It's funny because their Sonic episode is today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, for example, there's a point in the game, uh, and this is a, a minor like pop culture reference we put in the game. You get diamonds in the game. There's gems. And kind of like in Shovel Knight, you can use those gems to purchase meals that will give you like additional hearts, kind of like in Zelda, right? So mm-hmm. uh, you can also buy upgrades for your weapons. But anyway, there's a point, and when you collect a gem, it shows you a little number of what those values are in each gem. So like there's a point in the game where you're in a stage and there's seven gems in a row it's eight six eight six seven five three oh nine you get them all in a row bing 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 you know and so like people may like see that and like oh that's cool people mean oh totally glance over that and not even that's realize. awesome that's, you know? that's i think that, that's gonna be entirely it. dependent on how old you are right? <laughs> yeah right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. totally you know what some kid's gonna be at home playing on switch his dad's watching his dad's gonna chuckle and the kid's gonna be like yeah. my dad's weird <laughs> but what's cool at game on uh going back to game on uh my buddy he builds these custom arcade cabinets i don't know if you've seen pictures of yeah on, on Facebook they're or, gorgeous gorgeous he puts 
hours in this thing from scratch. He yeah, he had a couple of machines uh, at Game On last he year. He brought DuckTales, Zelda, and he brought, like, uh, I think he did Mega Man one. Oh, Just yeah. cool. fucking uh, beautiful. I mean, he doesn't, like, we're not talking, like, recycling. Machines. He's not using, like, Nintendo caps. He's actually cutting the wood. They're not and, like, Toy 10s, right? Right. Yeah, no, he's actually building from scratch. But he did this, um, this Ghostbusters 2 cap. I'll be at Game On. I'll show you a video after we're done talking. It'll blow your mind. Like he, he put 1,500 hours into it. God, it's that's awesome. Amazing. And then His work is incredible. He did a Sydney Hunter arcade cab. will be at our booth. Hell yeah, yeah, dude. That's, that's be, awesome. Right? Oh, that's going to be that's cool. Awesome. One, of, one of a kind uh, arcade cabinet will be proudly displayed in my, my room. So. Yes. Hell yeah, uh, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, aside from uh, Sydney Hunter, and yeah. you know, usually we uh, talk about what games we've been playing. Uh, what games uh, uh, have you been playing? Is there anything that uh, is newer, or, yeah. or anything that has been really <laughs> sucking you in? To be honest, like the last three months, the game on has been eating up all my free time. Oh, I suppose. So I haven't had much time to really play uh, games, which really is a bummer for me because it's just all my free time time gets sucked into game on and. And get ready for this release. But uh, I mean, my kids play. I've been playing a lot of games with my kids, like uh, Mario Party 10, and uh, been playing what else? Uh, Mario Kart 8. And a lot of the kids' games. They're my two sure. boys are five, so I'll play some time with yeah. them. All right. You yeah. get the right the right group of people. Mario Kart 8 is no kids' game. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And we're <laughs> doing a Mario Party yeah, yeah. around here. <laughs> Speaking of Mario Party, we're doing Mario Party Wars. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but Game On, we're doing a big Mario Party tournament. Uh, oh, cool! For the new Mario, Mario Party and stuff, so which is cool. It so. seems um... the losers are executed. <laughs> <laughs> the winners must fight Andrew WK yeah. in a hand-to-hand combat. I can't exactly. help but but kind of chuckle at the idea of a Mario Party tournament because yeah. any sense of strategy that you can ever have in that game, Nintendo is very quick to be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Fun. Fool. That's true. That is true. That is true. Um, this is the exact kind of game tournament that I might have a chance in one that just is random half the time. <laughs> and if you guys have time, you should enter. Uh, we're doing the Retro World Championships. I don't know if you're familiar with oh, that. Oh, cool. So it's, uh, again, we're doing like games on like uh, N64, covering N64 to Saturn. To, so we're taking all these games. It's kind of like the Nintendo World Championships, but covering more platforms. And the winner will get like a, a championship belt, like a title belt. Oh, yeah. dude. I'll show, you, uh, I'll show you a picture when we're done talking here. Hell yeah. You can maybe put it in, embed it in the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's super stuck about that. Um, the uh, I am af- afraid that I have overcommitted myself for that weekend because I'm essentially, I'm, I know that I'm not going to be able to, to get to do all the things that I want to do Yeah, because I am going to be running the show on Friday and Saturday night. Right. Um, which by the way, if you're coming to game on and we've got, uh, Mercurius FM, uh, Kawaii robot shark, Figar and snail mate, uh, playing, uh, the first night. And then we've got Sergio and the holograms back. Uh, we've got super madness, uh, the mini bosses yeah. and who else did I put? Oh yeah. And eight bit zero on uh, day right. two. So right. those will be uh, a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be running those shows and then we're going to be at our booth, probably trying to get people to spray Tyler in the face with a spray bottle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I cannot wait to coerce people into looking at me at, the, at this booth to get Tyler. We get you know to spray. Him. Are we gonna do the? Sp- are we gonna get a squirt gun or are we gonna get a spray I bottle? Feel like we should probably pull out the stops here. I feel like it's just got to be this, or it's got to be the the uh, pressure sprayer that I use to yeah, spray down. The, we should get a, uh, we should get a topless robot branded su- super soaker. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. You mentioned getting shirts and stuff too. Huh? Yeah, we are going to have our first run of a uh, small run of shirts available at Game On that we'll be giving out uh, while they last. Probably uh, once we get down to not many remaining, people are probably going to have to do things for it, for them. And the pause there ominous. makes it sound way more <laughs> ominous than I'm intending. What are you, what are you doing? It, it, it really just means it's not a fleshed out thought yet. I haven't come up with what they need to do Take in order up. to to do it, but it's got to be, I don't know, probably something terrible we, we to should, They're going to have to do we, we should We should do the supreme, the supreme marketing strategy for our shirts and just have drops, and those shirts will be like $9 billion. 
and they'll be, become their own economy at that point. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> you just get like Jessica, Jessica Negri out there with a really tight. There we go. Yeah, all right. She <laughs> Does she even do local cons? Like no, I, I mean, never see her. You see a t-shirt gun and start pegging kids like, in the face. Yeah, I know. Because I mean, I've never seen her at, at do fan fusion no. or anything like that. I've tried to reach out to her for on-site stuff at uh, the grid right. uh, for like Extra Life or anything like that. And uh, just don't even have get a response. Right, it's the same way. But I've heard her ask because it's way way too much too. So. Yeah, but yeah, don't sure surprise I'm... me. I mean, she's uh, probably the most recognizable cosplayer uh, yeah. right now. So right, agreed. Yeah. Um. The uh, what about the rest of you guys? What what have you been playing this week? Not much. Uh, I did a lot of tabletop again. World of Darkness. Yup. That's we're, a game. We're in a campaign together. We we're are. Ooh. Ooh. Nerds. Ooh. We're a bunch Ooh. of nerds. <laughs> um, yeah. Still, still more Devil May Cry. I know. I can't <laughs> stop. I have it's a not problem. Neo. Yeah. It hasn't been Neo for a long time. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> it's You're getting a brief break from Neo before Just Neo wait until, yeah, wait until Neo yeah. 2 comes out, assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I have been playing Mega Man Legends 2 this week again. Oh, nice. God. Because nice. uh, I love that game so much. <laughs> and everyone should. Uh, should they, though? Yes. <laughs> should they, though? You know, the owner of a lonely heart <laughs> is better than the owner of a broken heart. A lonely heart. <laughs> nope. Nope. I played more Final Fantasy VII, but I honestly have just not had a ton of time to play games the last few weeks just because... I'm trying, I'm doing too many things now. I'm auditioning for a few bands <laughs> yeah. and trying to, you know, actually do something besides karaoke with singing. So, right. so that preparation's kind of eaten into my, sure into my sitting at home and playing video games time. Got but it. that's good but, because you must succeed. Exactly. Focus. But one of these days I will finish Final Fantasy VII for the first time and thus actually be able to it call is... myself. A, a game great game. game. It's a great game. It is a really good game. We'll just keep moving the bar up so you can never call yourself a gamer, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, we'll, be, um, we'll be the latch that keeps your gate. I grabbed the uh, DLC that bridges Borderlands 2 to Borderlands 3 and started playing that. Nice. Um, that it's fun. I mean, it's Borderlands. Just, yeah. It's it's fun to be back in Borderlands. Yeah. Uh, Borderlands. I enjoy uh, uh, that game series quite a bit. It is a good series. And uh, um, so the DLC so far, I don't really see how it's going to link to 3 yet, but I am just kind of starting out. Basically, like... Your uh, what sanctuary. If you just find a copy of the third game at the end. Of it? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I would just. I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> I would just love if the whole thing was a non sequitur, like it's completely unrelated, and at the very end, it just like drops one big bomb and then brings you yeah. into the third game. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so um, that's a good series, though. The graphic cool. They are. Uh, they have the vault key, you know, that has the map of you know, all the different vaults uh, across the the galaxy. Spoilers. Mm. Um, <laughs> that uh, they've basically done nothing with, and uh, sanctuary is in no place to like fly places, and uh, so they're kind of they start out talking about what the hell they're going to do about all this, and when sanctuary gets attacked by militant rednecks, hmm. basically. And uh, uh, they're trying to steal back the key to, or steal the key to to go off and and you know travel the galaxy, whatever. Yeehaw! So you to MacGuffin to... the plot. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, uh, and they have uh, these weird plant spore infestation things that turn everything into mutant plants uh, oh. that are significantly more beefy and damagey and and shit mm. like that so. do you like mutant plants i mean I'm, I'm a big fan of little shop of horrors yeah there you go <laughs> uh for me it's attack of the uh, mutant tomatoes uh okay. or I mean, attack, also, of the, attack of the killer tomatoes sorry yeah, killer tomatoes. you um, can actually uh, you can actually grow those in space station 13 of course you can yeah, you can go carnivorous tomatoes and they eat people of really? course you it's can. fucking great dude that's of awesome. course you can that's awesome. yeah uh, and I also picked up Forager uh, that came out on Switch. It was published by Humble Bundle, and it's kind of like a crafty sort of thing where you, you know, use the land to build an you know, your economy and and buy different islands mm. around you in order to expand to them and mine and craft things. And it's basically, technically, 
once you get down to it, underneath it all, a, an idle clicker. Mm. Really, it's just not idle. <laughs> You're not impressing me with this description. <laughs> I am uh, so thrilled to are play you this, to game. Sell us on this game. No, <laughs> it's, it, I'm, I'm trying to warn people away <laughs> from it because I got sucked into it. It it has you. Uh, That's like, because the game has hold of your soul now. You started playing, and now you cannot have it back. There, there are enough interactions and promises of unknown expansions and things. Like I found myself just continually wanting to see what what more it had for me, uh, and that alone kept me playing. But ultimately, at at the end of the day. Uh, you're aiming to automate a lot of the things that you spent 90% of the game mm. doing manually. And at that point, it basically becomes an idle clicker because everything's doing the work for you. And you're like, well, how much time before that next upgrade, before I can right. get to this or that? I've already bought all the islands. What now? Uh, one thing the game. So that I feel like <laughs> they do right, though, is um, everything infinitely stacks. So there's no stack of 20 of an item. Uh, okay. It's everything. Yeah, I mean, It just does 1.7K if there's, you know, thousands or whatever. Oh, wow. um, so at, an item of a type only ever has to take up one spot in inventory. That's which good. That's good. More things need to do. Let's stop pretending that, oh, well, this stack of leather got 20, 20 high. I, I better start a new one. I have not played a single game in my life where inventory management is fun or integral to the game. I don't get it. But it's it's a staple in so many fucking games, and it's yeah. completely pointless. Yep. Game If it's not fun, don't put it in the game. Can't we get to a point where we just assume that everyone's got a bag of holding? And right. And yeah. just, just, just be done with that. it. It's fine. Like, yeah. Right. Or if you're going to include limitations on your on what you can carry, make them actually so realistic that you know you your game that right. your game. Well, has then to it becomes around. Skyrim, and uh, yeah. you, you become overburdened and <laughs> yeah. shit like that. I have th- nine hundred. But that's not even cheese. that's not realistic. <laughs> you become overburdened after three hundred oh, sure. after yeah after sure. whole, yeah you're whole, you're holding like five hundred kilos worth of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you've got um, you've got walk multiple now. great axes <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Moonlighter tried to turn um, inventory management into a puzzle. They gamified it pretty well. So I kind of liked that. When yeah, you're check that out, actually. when you're traveling through the dungeons and you come across a uh, chest, there will be curses on some of the items that you find mm. in the chest, and uh, uh, those curses will be uh, something like um, uh, delete the item that is diagonal to this item when you return back to town. Hmm. So it'll just destroy it. Or it'll be like d- duplicate the item that's like yeah, and you get double it, it or then... remove a curse from an item yeah. you know that uh, the arrow is pointing to, or this item uh, has to be situated to the left of your inventory, mm. top, bottom, or right. You know, yeah. seems like it could be cool, but I bet the novelty of it would wear off pretty quick. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it turns into tedium very quickly, it, like all inventory are, management was, inevitably does. You are correct. <laughs> it was fun I for the first like dungeon sucks. or so, and then you're like, oh, this is interesting. I like this idea. Yeah, and then after that, you're just like, eh, yeah. I'm Fortunately, done. most of the things that you're collecting in that game are not from chests. Yeah. It's from stuff that you kill and, and stuff like so that. But. In, in City Hunter, we have kind of we have an inventory uh, mm-hmm. menu. Uh, but what we did is some of the items don't count towards your inventory. If I count, like so, sure. For example, like the keys you collect, there's different color keys. If you go to the sub menu, it'll show you how many keys you have, but it doesn't go against your what's in your inventory yeah, yeah. area. So I think you, have, you can select like twelve items at a time in your inventory. But the only two items you can really carry in the inventory area would be like a bomb, which you use to break, uh, access different areas. And when you blow up the bomb, it's the sprite from Mario 2, the boom. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, and then there's, a, there's an elixir you can get, which helps you in your health. There's three different colors you can get depending on. So it's not like overly crazy on inventory. You can get rid of the bombs fairly quickly or you can buy stuff. But yeah. If right on. Sense, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm super stoked to check that out. Yeah. Uh, everything that I've seen looks like it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I've never played any of the other ones, uh, but uh, I mean, they're they're good games. I like you absolutely I like the, had me sold on Castle the Super Nintendo one, one Cover to Death, uh, Sega Trapper, good games. Don't get me wrong, but they're they're nothing in comparison to Curse of the Mind because 
the curse of mine couldn't run on a on a retro console like we couldn't run on sure it's just too advanced so then this one's not going to see d makes to no it's not gonna be seeing a port on the genesis anytime soon or you know it just wouldn't run sure you know it could probably make it maybe dreamcast but uh, we'll keep it on like modern. for all of the people who don't have one anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I have one somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, I'll send you guys uh, deal- download codes. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, for sure. uh, we have gotten to the end of the podcast. So uh, why don't you uh, tell everyone where you can be found? I can be found uh, game uh, YouTube, of course, Game Straight One. Um, I'm a huge Star Wars fan too, so I have a ch- channel on YouTube. And if you knew that or not, uh, no, I didn't know that. Star Wars Ooh, Net seventy seven. Um, my Star Wars collection is bigger than my gaming collection. It's Holy pretty, shit! Pretty insane. And you've got yeah. a pretty good uh, yeah, gaming pretty, collection. Yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, so would you say your uh, your Star Wars collection has the high ground? Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, that's why. Right. 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 <laughs> there we go. There you go. That's why we. Uh, you know, game on Xbox. Just gameonexpo.com, or you can find us on, on social media Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Uh, we're also uh, collectorvision.com. Collectorvision also on Instagram, Twitter, uh, you know, Facebook, all that good stuff. So cool. That's where I can be found. Awesome. Thank you yeah. so much for, uh, for having being me, a guest. Yeah, and yeah. uh, we're super stoked to uh, be at Game On. It's going to be, be Topless Robots' first con. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. a, a small rave I had. It's uh, I've never been to any conventions before in my life. Sweet. I've historically been too poor to do it. The first one I'm ever going to is Game On, and I'm actually like working at it, which is going to be strange. That's awesome. I'm super excited, though. I'm so, yeah. excited to have you guys. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. For sure. Thanks. Cool. Uh, Thank you for watching and or listening, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Adios. again. Mm-hmm. <laughs>